Good afternoon, and uh, yes, as Marcel said, uh, I would like to talk to you today about a high coverage uh, genome from Malpestus well, genome from the Justinian plague uh, that we have been able to obtain uh, from the side of Aschheim in southern Germany. So, from the historical records, uh, we learned that the Justinianic plague uh, had its first outbreak in Egypt, and from there it spread uh, in a pretty fast rate uh, throughout the, all the uh, lands that uh, border the Mediterranean, and even a bit further. Uh, but we don't have any historical record of the uh, plague ever reaching Germany. And in fact, one historian from the 8th century has recorded the one of the waves of the uh, Justinianic plague reaching Italy and uh, stopping uh, before entering Germany. But as we heard from previous talks today, uh, we, we find from molecular data that actually uh, Yersinia pestis was present there. So uh, this is a case where um, ancient DNA studies can provide uh, missing pieces of the puzzle where the historical record is incomplete. And I think for Yersinia pestis, more than any other bacteria, especially since the advent of, uh, 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 of uh, sequencing uh, technology in recent years, there have been an explosion of studies contributing uh, information to the evolution of this bacteria and uh, to the history of it. And I think most of his, these studies uh, have been mentioned before. We have the uh, modern data sets from Morelli et al. and uh, Cui et al. where uh, they have demonstrated there is a geographical distribution, uh, geographical clustering of uh, Yersinia pestis strains, and they have been able to infer uh, trade routes uh, that the disease traveled uh, upon. Uh, the first uh, the uh, whole genome of the uh, white passage from the Black Death was published by Bossada in 2011. And after that, more uh, genomes from the Black Death and post-Black Death have followed. And you'll hear more about this from uh, Maria's talk today. Um, of course, we heard the talk uh, from Sima and the very <coughs> exciting finding that uh, white passage has been around for more than 5,000 years. And uh, the first... Uh, Draft genome of the Justinianic plague we heard uh, in, the ta in the opening talk today uh, was published in 2014 by Wagner et al. And um, yes, and I won't uh, elaborate on this because we already uh, heard from Jennifer about uh, their findings. So they find an uh, indication of the Chinese origin of the disease and they uh, do not find any, uh, any uh, extant descendants of this strain. We were interested in uh, getting a higher coverage genome uh, from, the from the same time period and a more complete one in, or in order to uh, enable a higher resolution uh, of analysis. And for this, we were lucky enough to collaborate uh, with Michaela Herbeck from the State Collection in Munich that was working on the site of alternating that we just heard about. And uh, yes, this is one of the largest uh, early medieval cemeteries in Central Europe. And uh, in this site, there were 16 double burials. And of course, the finding from Aschheim was another indication that uh, white pestis might be found in this site also. There is, uh, like we heard before, around 20 kilometers from the site of Aschheim where the previous uh, genome was uh, obtained. So uh, our collaborators in Munich have done a pre-screening of 20 skeletons from the site of Alton Erding using PCR targeting the uh, PLA or PLA gene uh, that is, like we heard before, a specific gene for Yersinia pestis. Uh, in their pre-screening, they uh, found uh, two adults buried in the same grave, a male and female, to be positive for this uh, gene, for, white, for the presence of white pestis. Um, and the samples were carbon dating, carbon dated into uh, a range of uh, between uh, 428 AD to uh, 500 or 426, sorry, to 571. And uh, the grave goods found uh, with, the, in the, with the individual, so mainly a set of weapons 
for the male and a set of ornaments for the female. I uh, give an error uh, time frame uh, from 530 to 570 AD. Uh, so uh, basically uh, these uh, dates uh, uh, fall in one of the first uh, three waves of the early part of the 200-year-old uh, Justinianic pandemic. So uh, again, like we heard before, always with ancient DNA, we have the challenge to separate our uh, diluted uh, target reads uh, from the environmental or even the human uh, DNA that is in the sample. Uh, here, the target reads are represented in purple. And for this, we also used uh, a technique of array <coughs> capture. So using uh, probes designed uh, based on uh, modern references, we fished out our uh, desired ancient bestest reads, and uh, basically the other reads get washed away, and we sequence uh, our, uh, our target uh, reads. From this, we got a total of around 60 million uh, sequence reads, uh, around 11% of those uh, mapped to the pestis uh, reference genome. We got a relatively high coverage for an ancient genome of 18-fold with more than 91% of the genome covered. Uh, in our analysis, we wanted to compare our uh, new genome uh, with the previous uh, low-coverage Ashheim genome. <coughs> and we, did, we analyzed the raw data from this paper and we got a four-fold coverage with 30% uh, uh, of the genome covered. Uh, we checked, uh, we wanted to authenticate our DNA and we did uh, this uh, by inspecting the substitution uh, pattern and we do see uh, a pattern that is typical for ancient DNA. And in our phylogenetic analysis, uh, we confirm the results from the Ashen paper indicating uh, origin uh, of the strain in, uh, in China and uh, we also don't see any uh, extend descendants uh, of the strain. We do find uh, that the Ashheim, the, uh, the previously uh, published Ashheim, has uh, eight more substitutions uh, compared to our uh, new strain. Uh, however, when we uh, have a closer look at those positions, and what you see here uh, is a visualization of the alignment of the individual reads from each genome, uh, the upper one is the new alternating one, and the lower one is the previously published Ashheim one. And there, compared to the reference genome, whenever the, the color is uh, gray, uh, the, the base, the DNA base, is the same as the reference. And uh, what you see uh, in brownish are substitutions uh, that were found, basically the substitution that defines uh, the Ashheim strain. Uh, that is there, but what we see is actually that in this position some of the reads uh, have the substitution while others are the same as the reference. Uh, we also see an unusual coverage uh, peak uh, in this in the Ashheim uh, genome where we don't have, uh, yeah maybe I can show you. So basically, if we don't have any uh, reads from this side that can confirm uh, this substitution. And uh, the same pattern is apparent for all eight positions. So this led us to believe that these uh, positions are actually uh, false positives coming from this data set. And actually, the two strains, uh, uh, the two genomes from Ashheim and Alternating represent the same strain. Uh, we also made a comparison between our new alternating genome uh, with the modern strain, and we were able to find 16 gen genomic regions that were present in the Justinianic strain, but were missing in the modern strain. Uh, and we found uh, three uh, deletions that were unique for the Justinianic strain. And uh, some of these uh, regions uh, were uh, associated in previous studies with different stages of infection of, uh, by white pestis. Uh, we also did a substitution analysis and we found the 63 substitutions that were unique to this Unyang strain. Uh, 30 of these were not previously reported. And also some of these uh, were associated uh, through uh, different uh, stages of infection by white pestis. 
Uh, yes. So to summarize, so uh, we are able to confirm the presence of Yersinia pestis in another uh, early medieval site uh, where no historical records uh, have ever documented it. Uh, the fact that uh, we find the Ashheim strain and the Altonerding strain, uh, uh, or the Ashheim genome and the Altonerding one, uh, represent the same strain, points to a low diversity in southern Germany in the 6th century. Of course, these uh, two genomes are obtained from very close, uh, uh, very close uh, sites, so we need a lot more data to say, but it, this could be an, an indication of fast spread of the disease. Um, the errors found in the previously published data sets uh, highlight the importance uh, of using high uh, coverage genomes or high quality genomes whenever they are available and also using strict criteria uh, for ancient DNA analysis. Uh, of course, we don't come by uh, high uh, coverage uh, ancient genomes every day, so exhaustive sampling is needed uh, to uh, widen these uh, data sets. And uh, finally, the unique features uh, we found, find in our ancient strain uh, call for functional studies uh, that will examine uh, whether they have an effect uh, of, on uh, white pestis physiology or the uh, disease process and what uh, the effect is. And yes, uh, with this I'd like to thank uh, my colleagues and my supervisor, Johannes Krause, and uh, also our collaboration partners uh, for funding and thank you for listening.